Friday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Why was dad awarded custody of their daughter? What happened in that court for them to say, I'm giving this child to an accused molester? During that trial, I was portrayed as being crazy. Why did your father testify against you in trial? Who's the victim here? I reached to get Sophie, and Lindsay said that I had assaulted her. You did not touch me. Hey. Call me right yes. now. You assaulted me. And who's the villain? I had a traumatized three-year-old girl saying, my daddy hurt me. Where is he going to hurt you at? A child does not say those things unless it happened or she was coached. You cannot coach a three-year-old. Ask anyone. That is coaching. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Twenty-five-year-old Daniel just got a full-ride scholarship to medical school, but he says dealing with his daughter's mother has been a bumpy ride at best. Now, he claims his ex, Lindsay, is a compulsive liar who has falsely accused him of molesting their four-year-old daughter, Sophie. So take a look at what the court saw that turned their custody battle upside down. Why didn't you tell them what you told us? Because now you have to go back and see your daddy. Yeah. No, you don't. No. He's going to hurt you? Yeah. Where is he going to hurt you at? You might think that video helped Lindsay get full custody of the little girl, but instead it backfired. And now dad Daniel is in charge and Lindsay only has supervised visitations. Now, she claims that she just had a bad lawyer and was made to look crazy in court. Now, why would an accused molester get full custody, and why would Lindsay's own dad testify against her? Well, we asked both to take a polygraph, and we're going to unravel this web of accusations because there's a little girl caught in the center of this story. Take a look. Lindsay is a liar, a manipulator, and very deceitful. When we first started dating, Lindsay was very nice, but when things didn't go her way, she turned on me. When she told me she was pregnant, I was pretty shocked. When she realized that I wasn't going to marry her right then, she started saying that the baby was not mine. Once I realized that I wasn't going to be able to see Sophie, I filed for paternity to make sure that she was my daughter, and we actually got the paternity test back, and it was proven that she was my daughter. After the standard visitation started is when Lindsay accused me of sexually abusing and our daughter. After the investigation, it was determined that I 100% did not do what Lindsay was accusing me of. It's the Betsy spider, pull off the rose bump. And so I filed for custody at that time. The end result was that Lindsay was to immediately give up custody. The court determined that Lindsay was coaching our daughter to make these accusations against me. Sophie, do you want to go see your daddy? Can you tell me why? Come here, come here. Where is he going to hurt you at? It definitely makes me angry. Uh, right now, Lindsay only gets supervised visits with me. There's absolutely no predicting what she's going to do because she's so unstable. But next month, things are going to change. Lindsay's going to get supervised visits that are actually overnight, which I'm extremely worried about. I think she's capable of brainwashing our daughter because she tried that in the past. Well, Lindsay says she never brainwashed their little girl and was in total shock when the court gave Daniel custody of Sophie. In fact, she believes he only wanted to take the child away from her out of spite. 
I got pregnant when I was 17 with Daniel's baby. I knew right away that I was going to keep her. He told me to get an abortion or give her up for adoption. It made me feel cheap. I told him he wasn't the father because he kept insisting on abortion or adoption. For me, that showed that he did not want this baby. I only told him he wasn't the father for about four months. And of course, I started feeling guilty. So I offered for him to be a part of her life. I'm just so proud. Daniel is very arrogant. He cares most about what's best for him. Daniel tried to break into my parents' house the night after she was born. I have no idea what he was trying to do. I raised some red flags. When my daughter was three, she claimed that her dad had sexually abused her. There was physical damage to her private area. She was acting extremely traumatized, crying. <laughs> terrified of everyone and everything. I was determined to get her help to find out what had happened. The therapist was pretty much convinced that she had been sexually abused. I was portrayed in court as being crazy. They did accuse me of coaching her to say things and that was completely untrue. I videotaped her because the police weren't listening to me. Ultimately, the court dismissed the charges. It's been a year since I lost custody of her. I'm still as devastated as the day that I had to hand her to her dad. Okay, you, you were stunned that the court did what they did. Yes, I was. What were you expecting them to do? I was expecting them to investigate it a little bit better and to protect her. Okay. At the time that you got pregnant, you weren't married to Daniel at the time. No, I was not. And you say he wasn't even interested in the baby when he found out you were pregnant, right? No, he was not. And he didn't want you to have the baby? No. He tried to convince me to get an abortion or give up for adoption multiple times. And you just couldn't do that? No, I couldn't. So how is it that he goes, in your estimation, and report from saying, I don't even want to have this child, to then fighting for custody to take her away from you. I wish I had an answer for you. I honestly still don't understand the whole situation myself. But do you think it is out of spite, though? I mean, do you think this is just to get back at you? Does he have a vendetta against you? It feels out of spite because he doesn't have time for her. She's in daycare 11 hours a day. His parents are taking care of her. I mean, he's he's not in the position to really raise a child. Yeah. And how do you get along with your daughter? I mean, you, you two, in the time that you've had her and that you've spent together, you guys were like this, right? We were. I had a very close relationship with her. And up until the time you went to court, all he had was visitation, correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. And so take me through that moment, that day, when you had to take this little girl that you had been raising every day of her life and hand her over to this man that you believed to be molesting her. What, how does that, what was that like? That was by far the hardest day in my entire life. I mean, I was having to put on a happy face for her and tell her, you know, it's okay, you're just going to go see your daddy for a little bit, and, you know, you get to come back home soon. But I knew that wasn't true. So it was very difficult. Did it happen immediately after the hearing? No, actually, it didn't. That's the strange part. They waited five days to come pick her up. Huh. So it was decreed then... But they waited five days to come get her. Yeah, he could have picked her up on Monday and he waited until Friday to come get her. Okay. So on that Friday, when he came, you knew this is it. I, I, she doesn't live with me anymore. Going home after that was my entire life had been revolved around this little girl. And going home after that was, I mean, I just sat down on my bed and I started bawling. I was like, I didn't know what to do with myself. I didn't know what, I mean, what to do whenever I had spent my entire life raising her, or her entire life raising her, and then now I didn't have her anymore. Yeah. So why did the court flip on you here? Have you accused other people in your life of molesting behavior? 
Yes, I have. Did you accuse your father? Yes, I did. Did you accuse your ex-boss of assaulting you? Yeah. I don't really see how that's relevant, though. And later... Yeah, I alerted him after the baby was born. But you didn't tell him where. No, I did. I told him what hospital I was at and told him to come up and see her and everything. Didn't you and your family go to every hospital in yes. town trying to find her? Yes. Wednesday on an all-new Dr. Phil. The press called her the motive to a murder. His wife was found dead at the bottom of the stairs. Were you his mistress? No. What did he give you? A new car, a ring, a necklace full of diamonds. For the first time. After my wife died, she gave me a shoulder to cry on. Was it her shoulder that attracted you to her? He's speaking out. You say she was a gold digger. You are obsessed and you gave me all your gold. He was a gold giver. You weren't a gold digger. That's Wednesday. So why did the court flip on you here? What happened in that court for them to say, you know what? I'm taking this a child away from this mother and giving this child to an accused molester. What happened? From what I understand, what happened during that trial is I was portrayed as being crazy and just uh, not a bad mother, but just completely crazy. That I had made this all up and I was going to damage her by that. Okay, listen, I, I trained as a forensic psychologist. I've worked in the court system as someone that does evaluations and advises the court as is the fitness as a parent. And let me tell you, there has to be major findings to undo a working situation. There was no indication that, that, that you were neglecting this child, that you were failing to get doctor visits, that you were not feeding, clothing, bathing loving, nurturing this child. Something major had to go before the court for them to say, you know what, we're gonna disrupt this child's life and take this child away from this mother and give it to an accused molester. What was it? I, I honestly don't know. I was, everyone was shocked whenever he got custody of her and I got such a limited supervised visitation because there was not a, I, I didn't feel like they had a right to do what they did. Okay, how do you feel about being here today? I'm hoping that it'll help my situation with my daughter. That's why I'm here for Sophie. Because I want to help this situation. Because your life is not working at this point, right? Your daughter's not in your life. She's not. And so what you're doing is not working. So you have to change something. You have to be able to take a look at yourself and go, look, obviously this is working. I need to change something. And so you have to be willing to take a painful look at yourself, just like he has to be willing to take a painful look at himself, or this child is gonna be caught in the middle forevermore. How did you two manage this into such a fractured situation? You can't tell me you have no idea what happened in court. Why, why is court would take such a radical position? Didn't they think you were coaching this child? They, they claimed that in the first trial, yeah. No, that, that was claimed by the other side, but the court must have believed that. As far as whenever the judge gave his ruling, he, he basically said that he was afraid that I couldn't keep my mouth shut, is what he said. Say that again? That I couldn't keep my mouth shut. About? About that I believe that something had happened to her. So they alleged and the court believed that you coached her to say those things rather than that you believe they really happened. No. I think that they were more concerned with that I believe strongly that they happened and they didn't want that affecting her relationship with her father. Did the court believe she was molested? The court didn't have enough evidence. So they did not believe she was molested? They didn't no. have enough evidence to decide that she was molested? No, they didn't. Okay, and they thought you were going to continue telling who that she was molested? They, they thought that I would continue portraying her dad, or not continue portraying her dad, but that I would portray her dad as a negative Person. To her? To her. Is that true? No, that is not true at all. Did you ever coach her? No, I did not. Did you ever encourage her? No, I did not. Did you falsely accuse him of molesting her? Now I believe that he didn't do it, but at the time I believed 100% that he did it. Uh -huh. I was very convinced. Have you accused other people in your life of molesting behavior? Yes, I have. Did you accuse your ex-boss of assaulting you? Uh, yes, I did. When was that? Uh, beginning of December, I believe. Of December? Yeah. Like this last December? Yeah. 
I don't really see how that's relevant, though. Well, you've accused the father of your child of molesting your daughter. You've accused your father of molesting you. You've accused your ex-boss of assaulting you. Have you made accusations against your boyfriend? I uh -huh. believe I had him criminally trespassed because he turned into quite a stalker. Okay, so you accused him of untoward behavior as well? Yes. If the court is looking at all of this today, you're not at the time, but if looking at all this today, does that bode well for you? I, I don't know. I mean, that, that I've had bad things happen to me, does that bode well for me? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. I can't control what other people do in my life. I can only control myself and what I do. Are all of those accusations true? I don't believe the one about Daniel molesting Sophie is true, but I believe all the other ones are. Why did both your mother and father testify against you in trial? I had to protect themselves. Do you think his lawyer badgered them into it? Oh, definitely. And later, did he assault you at the ball? Uh, he tried to grab my daughter in my arms and he touched me. Did he assault me at the mall? Well, apparently you don't think so. so. No, I, I wasn't there. I'm a mom who heard my daughter, Megan out cry, and I tried to protect her the best that I could. And in exchange, I got her taken away from me. I'm going the tree. Yeah. I'm just so great. I'm not allowed to be her mom anymore. The court has pretty much removed my rights to be her mother, but I'll always be her mom. Why did your father testify against you in trial, both your mother and father? I had to protect themselves. My mother actually didn't testify, just my father at the first trial. Uh -huh. At the final trial, they refused to testify. Uh -huh. But why would your parents feel the need to not support you and actually, in fact, say... To protect themselves, that's why. They said, Daniel and his lawyer said that they would bring out the sexual abuse in court mm -hmm. and that if he wanted to defend himself, he needed to testify against me. Do, do you think his lawyer badgered them into it? Oh, definitely. But you do now have visitation. Yes, I do. Are you exercising it on a regular basis? Uh, I exercise, exercise my visitation as often as possible. Okay. By my count, you've had 13 opportunities for visitation. How many have you actually exercised? I am not sure. I go and see her about once a month. I count four of 13. Four of 13? Uh-huh. That you've had the opportunity for. And what I'm trying to do do you realize that she lives four and a half hours away from me? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I do. And that's inconvenient. Not only inconvenient, but it's, I mean, not always possible. I would go see her every single time if I could. Mm -hmm. Well, there's two sides to this story. I'm wanting you, I, I, I've given you an opportunity to talk without anybody else here. And I ask you if you're willing to take a hard look at yourself. Because look, you may be in a situation now where you feel a certain way. Will you agree with me that whatever's going on in your life right now, as to your relationship with your daughter, it's not working for you. You don't have custody of her. That's is true. what I mean. You would like that to change. That's true. But it's not possible. I just joined the military. I'm not, I'm not going to get custody back of her anytime soon. But she's four years old, right? Yes. So you have your whole life and her whole life stretched out ahead of her. What I'm trying to do is create some insights that can change this long term. I, I want you there when she's growing up. I want you there when all of these things that little girls go through and need their mother for, you can be an integral part of her life. And I, I really want that for you. I want that for her. 
But in order for that to happen, you got to be willing to ask yourself, what can I do? It's like you said, I can't look, if these people have assaulted me, molested me, uh, encroached upon me, whatever, I, I can't help that. All I can do is control myself, is what you said, right? Yes, that's what that, I said. That's what I'm saying to you. You can control yourself. Somehow you've got to change something about yourself to get a different result. And I have. I have changed a lot about my life. All right. We'll talk about that. Lindsay claims Daniel assaulted her right in front of their daughter. We're going to meet Daniel. We're going to talk about that incident in the mall that led to him calling the police and a whole lot more. What I want is this family to be unified. We'll be right back. I recorded some audio during a supervised visit with Lindsay. Okay. You're not allowed to touch me without permission. Hey. You do not touch me. Hey. You do not ever touch me. Okay. Call the police right now. This assaulted me. And later. You've used your God-given bond as a mother to coach your own daughter for your control You cannot days. coach a three-year-old, Daniel. Ask anyone. That is coaching. Daniel says his ex, Lindsay, got pregnant on purpose to trap him into marrying her. When that didn't work, she claimed the child she was carrying was not his. A paternity test later proved Daniel was indeed the father. Now, when he was finally able to get overnight visitations with his daughter, he says Lindsay then made up lies that he molested their little girl. Lindsay says she only reported what her daughter told her as any responsible mother would. But the court sided with Daniel, and now Lindsay only has supervised visitation. Here's what happened at the last one. I recorded some audio during a supervised visit with Lindsay. She's refused to give Sophie over to me, and she takes her into the bathroom. I asked for Sophie back, and she refused to give her back. Guys, you have to take Sophie, okay? You cannot take her into the restroom. You have to be continuously supervised, and I'm asking you to have her back. I reached to get Sophie, and Lindsay said that I had assaulted her. Okay. You're not allowed to touch me without permission. Hey. You do not touch me. Hey. You do not ever touch me. Everything's going to be okay. Call the police right now. Yes. You just assaulted me right in front of you. I just assaulted you. You just assaulted me. I didn't touch Lindsay at all. It may have been a brush, but it wasn't a touch. That's when I walked away, and I called the police. Hey, Sophie's right oh, here, and you're yelling in front of her. I'm going to have to so ask hard. you to please calm down. You assaulted Okay. And I played it for the police, and they go, this is an assault at all. Uh, Daniel, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Yes, um, thank you. Did you lie to him about him being the father? Uh, did I tell him I wasn't the father? I did whenever I was about four and a half months pregnant. Okay. Because he was so insistent on the fact of not wanting me to have that baby. Okay. But you did lie about him being the father. You knew he was the father. I wanted to give him an out because he... I. I knew that he didn't want anything to do with her. Can I interject right there? Uh, I was scared. And so, yes, I did. Uh, I was 17. I did consider abortion and adoption um, because I was 20 years old and I was scared about the, you know, being a, a new father. Um, and we both talked about it, in fact. Um, but we both obviously felt like that was not the right thing to do. And so uh, I told her that I was going to be in her life my daughter's life, and I asked to be involved in the pregnancy, go to the doctor's visits, be there throughout the entire thing. And uh, she said, you know, you're going to have to marry me. And I that felt like true. that was going to be a rush into something that, that would not be good. We just, she just got pregnant, and if we just suddenly get married, that's going to complicate things. I asked you to date me, Daniel, and you yes. refused to do even that. You what? I asked him to date me, at least. To, to like, okay, I was, I was raised religious, and I thought you get married when we get pregnant out of wedlock. He was against that, so I said, okay. And then I was like, well, we need to at least date. I don't want to have to go around telling people that I'm pregnant with some random guy's baby. And he said that that would complicate things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I felt like it would complicate things. And uh, just the way she was getting, she was starting to show her true colors. And I realized what do you mean by that? True colors. She was beginning to manipulate me and just 
there's just something not right. There's just something weird when someone flips on you and you start realizing mm -hmm. what you really were, you know, who who you're really involved with. Do you think maybe a little bit of my personality change would have to do with the fact that I was 17 years old and pregnant and very hormonal? And I didn't plan for that. I, I just heard that you, you think that I plan to get pregnant on purpose. Yes, I was 100%. 17 years old. Right. Your parents and I both agree that you definitely wanted to get pregnant. My parents don't have anything to do with <clears throat> anything, Daniel. You didn't want to date her. You didn't want to marry her. But you didn't abandon her either. You were no. saying, I want to be involved. I want to go to the visits. I want to be involved and with also, the baby. I want to be there. Yes. Okay. I, I Is asked. that true? Did he offer to oh. be involved with the pregnancy? Yeah, yeah, and he wanted to keep on sleeping with me too, as well as that. He, he you know, he, he didn't want to date me, but, you know, sleeping with me was completely fine. That's definitely not the case. That was definitely the case. <laughs> <laughs> Have you all met? <laughs> What's the truth here? I mean, did you want to be involved in a pregnancy? Yes. Did he want to be involved in a pregnancy? Can we agree on that? No. No. Did I did. I have, I have so many text messages that say, will you please let me come see her? You even gave me one picture of Sophie uh, in, in your womb. It was a sonogram. You came with me that sonogram? Yeah. I made one that? doctor's visit and I asked for at least 10. You Why did. lie to him about him being the father? I wanted to give him an out. He didn't want her. And I felt like his parents were pushing him towards this responsibility because he was the father. So I thought I'll give him. I don't, I was, I'm not, I'm not going to try to defend that because I was 17 well, years old. Well, you are old. trying to defend it. You're, you're saying I was, it was, I was, it was a gift. I was giving him an out. Yeah, no, I was trying to give him an out, but it was still wrong. I mean, he still had every right to be part of her life. So I want to ask you a question. Looking at it from my perspective, do you not think that I would have been scared just suddenly I had a, a child with a girl that I ha had met a few times? I will admit I was young and dumb. And then when we both committed months, to this, and you months. committed to this, obviously, I said, I want to be there. We're going to have a child, and I'm going to be involved and I am going to be her father. And I asked repeatedly to please allow me to be there at the birth. I have Facebook messages. Please allow me to be involved in naming our daughter. Let, let her have my middle name, so on and so forth, for nine months. Nine, nine months, nine Lindsay. Months. You didn't talk to me before. Yes. You didn't talk to because me Because you shut me out. You manipulated months. me so much. Eventually, never, I'm just like, tried. I'll you wait for her to. You never back and you never pushed it. You say, come see me, but then you leave a block at the desk? He didn't, okay, I was I was expecting for him to call before he came up there. And for him to, to ask me what room number I was in. Wednesday on an all-new Dr. Phil. The press called her the motive to a murder. His wife was found dead at the bottom of the stairs. Were you his mistress? No. What did he give you? A new car, a ring, a necklace full of diamonds. For the first time, after my wife died, she gave me a shoulder to cry on. Was it her shoulder that attracted you to her? He's speaking out. You say she was a gold digger. You were obsessed and you gave me all your gold. He was a gold giver, you weren't a gold digger. That's Wednesday. You did alert him when the baby was born, right? Yeah, I alerted him after the baby was born. But you didn't tell him where? No, I did. I told him what hospital I was at and told him to come up and see her and everything. And he was very upset by the fact that I didn't tell him immediately whenever she was born. Didn't you and your family go to every hospital in yes. town trying to find her? Yes. Why would you do that if she told you which hospital she was and to come see her? Because she didn't tell me. Did I call you and tell you that she was born? She called me a day after she was born uh -huh. and says, you, you, might wanna like, you might like to know uh, your daughter's been born. I'm like, okay. Uh, and she goes, would said. you like to come see her in the hospital? It, it, she flipped. There again, she flipped. She says, would you like to come see her? And I'm thinking, okay, I haven't talked to you in a couple of months because things had already gone crazy. You hadn't crazy. talked to me in a couple of months. Oh, you had just recently so talked to me. I got my family together then. to go see my daughter, and we trying to call her, trying to figure out where she's at, and in retrospect, I realized it was nothing but a big game. That is not true. He knew which hospital was going Later, out. we found out that she put a no information thing up at the front desk to where legally they were not allowed to tell us if she was there. I did, I did put myself as no information patient because I felt like that was a lot safer.
Four. I said, I just had Sophie. How come I, I didn't see her? How come I met her in the paternity test office? Because you tried to break later. in my parents' house that night. Oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah, came to the hospital. Why would you, if, if you called them to come see you, then. Goodbye on my behalf if I tried to break in their house. Going in and out of random room. No, you didn't talk to my parents for years, Daniel. Okay, if so he, don't try to play that game at all. Wait a minute. All. If, he, if you called him to come see the baby, then why would you put a block on the on the door when no, he got there? No, I had there? done that from the very beginning. Well, I understand, but you said come see the baby. Then why would you I not? I told him which hospital is that I. He gets to the front desk and they say, "We can't tell you if she's even in the building." You say, come see me, but then you leave a block at the desk? He didn't... Okay, I was I was expecting for him to call before he came up there and for him to, to ask me what room number I was in. After you've had a baby, is you're exhausted and it's Dr. a Dr. Phil, these games will wear time. a man out, let me tell you. <laughs> but you asked him to come see you. You said you can come, right? Did you say, just when you get here, call? Did you tell him what hospital you were in? He's misconstruing the entire thing. But he did look and look and couldn't find... He, he couldn't get to you, right? And then he called me and cussed me out, saying... I never the, called you and cussed the, you out. Yes, you did. No. Yes, you did. This is why we text message now. <laughs> And this is why I have an audio recording on me at all times. Okay, did he assault you at the mall? Uh, he tried to grab my daughter in my arms and he touched me. Did he assault you at the mall? Uh, being, being as though I was a security officer, I was under the impression that any time anyone touched me against my will that that was an assault, so. Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to be commonsensical here. Did he assault you at the mall? Did he assault me at the mall? Well, apparently you don't think so. so. No, I, I wasn't there. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, hell, I wasn't there. Okay. He grabbed my daughter in my arms, causing me to fall back a little bit. You can call that whatever you would like. If you think I don't see game playing going on here, one of us is a fool, and I'm pretty sure it isn't me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the objective one here. It's, it's hard for you two to see it objectively because you're emotionally invested, right? Well, if ask, you're... ask him what he's done wrong. See if you can come up with anything. See, I mean, you... Well, I know how to do an interview, but thank you for the, you're for the encouragement. I thought I'd give you some tips. I, I appreciate that. Let's take a break. Coming up, is Daniel misconstruing the birth story? I mean, is he, t I mean, is he just out to lunch here? Uh, guys miss this stuff some. Uh, guys don't have babies. Guys don't go through the, the things that you have to go through. Uh, his parents are here. They might recall some details. We'll talk some more about this when we come back. Lindsay has no qualms using her own daughter to wage war with Daniel. She will call the police, CPS, take you to court. I think it's horrible. We have a lot of fun here in the studio audience. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click be in the audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL at 323-461-7445. One of my biggest fears is that Lindsay is capable of running away with our daughter. The last time Lindsay had our daughter supervised by her grandparents, we actually had to call the police to get her back. That was extremely scary. Daniel is fully convinced that the mother of his child, Lindsay, is unstable and made up false accusations about him molesting their daughter to get him out of their daughter's life. Now, were these allegations did they arise from the first time you had her for overnight visitation? No, not the, not the first time. When she turned three years old is when I started getting standard visitation, which was one weekend every, uh, every other weekend. And uh, I got that in October and when my daughter turned three. And then in December is when she made these allegations. Okay. And these weekend visitations included 
overnights. Yes. She's staying with you overnight. Correct. Okay. And did you resist his having visitations? No, I sent her over every single time. No, I mean, did you resist him getting the right to have the visitations? No, I, I mean, I signed the papers. Why did it papers. take you three years to get? Because she resisted the right for me to get visitation. Really? Okay. Did well, we, why did, did it we take go three years? fight about this? Yes, anything? we did, in fact. Do you remember we did? that? No, I, I thought we settled everything outside of court. That was what We were in the is. court building. Yeah, no, I know we were in the court building, Daniel, but okay. we did, did we go in front of a judge before she turned three? No, no. we did not. But did, did you have to petition the court for visitation? Yes. And he agreed on a limited supervised visitation schedule Because you schedule wouldn't voluntarily give him the visitation? Correct. He could have gone inside of the courtroom and fought for it, but he didn't. But you didn't voluntarily give it to him? Voluntarily give him visitation of yes. her? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I didn't resist it. I went up and I did the paternity test and I, we went to court and I showed up. I, I didn't resist anything. Why did you have to go to court? Because she resisted everything. <laughs> why did he have to go to court to get visitation? I mean, why did the two of you not sit down and say, it's our daughter, you can have her half the time, I'll have her half the time? Well, I think you can kind of figure that out right, right now, can't you? We don't get along very well. Well, but it isn't about, the, it wasn't that you two were going to spend each other's weekends together. It was the little girl. Yeah, no, I know so that. So it doesn't matter how well you two get along. It's, it's that you're going to share and co-parent the daughter. Correct. I was concerned about her safety, honestly, after he tried to break into my parents' house the night after By the time born. we had reached court and our lawyers had mediated this for us, I decided that it was, in fact, in the best interest of our daughter for me to stair step our, our, my way up in visitation because A, she was nursing and I'm a health freak and I wanted her to be nursed. And I nursed her for two And so not only did I agree to stair stepping my way up, I also agreed to let her supervise the first six months. Was it six months? It was about six months. About six months. The first six months from day one. And I did all those visits. She made me no, sit on the porch swing. No, he did that because very awkward, he did that did. because the the first time that I I took her over there before we went to court. The first time that he got to see her was not when she was six months old. As soon as we got the paternity test results, then I texted him and I said, "Would you like to see your daughter? You know, I will bring her over there anytime." I didn't hear anything back from him for about a week. I texted him again. I said, "Would you like to see your daughter? You know, I would like to bring her over so that she can see you and your family." And then finally, he texted me back and he said, you can bring her over this Saturday at noon. Not, oh, I'd love to see her or anything like that. Just, you can bring her over this Saturday at noon. So I did. I brought her over there, let her see his family. And while I was over there, he threatened to drop her. You made these allegations that he molested her, but you say you now don't believe that he did. Just recently, whenever I've been, uh, I guess, writing about it, it's, it's been, I guess, a self-healing thing of realizing that there were other, there were other options. There were other, her, there were other things that could have happened instead of that. She was only three years old. But you didn't coach her. No, absolutely not. There's a video of, of you talking to her. Let, let's take a look at this. Sophie, do you want to go see your daddy? Can you tell me why? Because I don't. It's okay. You don't need to cry. Can you tell me why you don't want to see him? <laughs> it's okay, don't cry. Mommy's right here. <laughs> it's okay, don't cry. Mommy's right here. Come here, come here, come here. What's the matter? <laughs> hey. Why don't you tell them what you told us? Because now you have to go back and see your daddy. <laughs> Do you want to go back and see your daddy? Uh, uh, he's going to what? No, he's going to hurt. He's going to hurt you? Yeah. Where is he going to hurt you at? Um. If I were you, I'd be pretty sad for doing that too. That was not something I did. That was something that was you going did. on. A child does not say those things unless How can a, you coach a three-year-old, Daniel? Or B, How can she you was coach coached. a three-year-old? I don't know. You tell them. How did you do it? 
You cannot coach a three-year-old. That was what I was dealing with, and that's why I made those videotapes, because I... That's why I'm here, because I didn't do it, and you did coach her, and I would feel awful. That's I don't know why you're how you here? sleep at that's night. That's why you're here, because I thought we were here to make, make our relationship I'm better here for Sophie. to confront you about what you've done to an innocent child, your child. You've used your God-given bond as a mother to coach your own daughter for your control You cannot days. coach a three-year-old, Daniel. Ask anyone. You cannot coach a three-year-old. Um. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is coaching. <laughs> Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. We ran out of time today, but I have a lot more questions for these two. Plus, Daniel has asked for the opportunity to take a polygraph test in order to prove once and for all that he has done nothing inappropriate with his daughter. He also wanted Lindsay to answer an important question as well. We're going to reveal the results of all of that tomorrow. You will not want to miss it. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, the drama continues. Lindsay is controlling, rude, arrogant. Lindsay walks off the stage. She wants to come back out, and she said she is not going to be very nice. The confrontation with Dr. Phil... What do you want to say? What do you want to say? That shocked the audience. I came here to help my daughter, and you turned this into a giant circus. Is it possible that this circus is a missed opportunity? And both parents agreed to take a polygraph. The questions were, have you ever touched Sophie for a sexual reason? And your answer was? No. And the results were? That's tomorrow. I want to thank all of my guests today on DrPhil.com. We will have some important tips for right ways to go through the adoption process. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time.